Hey, what's up guys? We're here to answer a very simple question. It's 2018 and as you, uh, some of you might have noticed from my previous vlog, I am planning on upgrading my PC very, very soon. However, the question remains, does the i7-4790K still cut it in terms of 2018 performance, okay? So what we're going to look at in this mini series is, you know, we're going to, obviously we're going to compare it to the newer hardware, which is coming in a couple of weeks time. Uh, but before that, we're going to take a look at some of the benchmark scores that the i7-4790K managed to score in two configurations. One was using optimized default, and the other is using uh, overclock settings, right? 1.35 volts, uh, managing a stable overclock of 4.7 gigahertz. All right, so the system specs are in the description below. And why don't we just flash up some numbers on the screen? So the first thing we did was productivity tests. Uh, based on synthetic benchmarks uh, as well as Blender. So if we can look here, we use a Cinebench multi-core and single core. We went with Povray, which is a rendering uh, software. We went with Geekbench, both single core and multi-core. We went with the BMW scene in Blender. And of course, we went with TimeSpy using the CPU score. Now if we were to look at the results, we see an average uh, between the optimized defaults uh, going up to the overclock settings, uh, an average increase of about 10, probably about 10% more or less, if you can see there from all of the data. This is, of course, uh, in contrast, if you look at the scores themselves, uh, you know, they're, they're not great, they're not amazing by today's standards, but they're still pretty serviceable. Serviceable, I should say. Uh, but yeah, for a 0.7 gigahertz overclock, which is roughly about 22%, uh, in terms of clock speed, you end up with a 10% increase in performance, okay? So that's when it comes to productivity as well as uh, synthetic benchmarks. Okay, on to the games. So tried out four different games. Uh, the Division, uh, no, sorry, three games. The Division, F1 2018, and Assassin's Creed. And of course, uh, we're going to throw up all of the numbers uh, for you guys as well up here. On, I'm reading off here so that you guys don't have to read it. But yeah, uh, we see an average increase of not much uh, in the, the other titles. In titles like The Division, we can clearly see then that there's not much performance differential between ultra and medium settings uh, in terms of the, the, the performance gain. Uh, if, if anything, they're within margin of error, they're basically the same, right? Uh, the same thing for F1 uh, 2018, there's a slight increase in terms of uh, performance when you go from optimized to overclocked. Uh, in Assassin's Creed, now this is where there's probably going to be much more of a difference because Assassin's Creed loves uh, multi-core processors and it tends to do quite well on them. It's quite difficult on them actually. The GPU never really went above 65 to probably 80% tops on the higher resolution settings, uh, higher resolution and higher detailed settings. Uh, but you can see here an average difference of about, what, 5% between optimized defaults and overclock. So there is a performance gain to be had by overclocking your, your CPU uh, if it's an i7-4790K, and you will see a discernible performance uh, increase. However, it's, it's not much. Again, it's a 22% overclock, and you see a gaming performance increase of, on average, on Assassin's Creed anyway, of about, what, 6%? Yeah, a little bit, yeah, about 6%, and uh, on other games that we tried out, not much at all. So that's a little snapshot of what the i7-4790K looks like, as is right now, in terms of benchmarks in 2018. Are they still a handy buy in the second-hand market? Probably, if you can get one below, you know, probably below about 600 ringgit, and if you can get like the RAM and the motherboard and all that below 1,000, yeah, I think it's a worthwhile, it's a worthwhile investment if you're shopping in the second-hand market. How that performs in comparison to a modern day CPU like the Ryzen 7 2700X, which is what uh, is going to be arriving in a couple of weeks time, we'll see, we'll run the benchmarks then. So yeah, is the i7-4790K worth it in 2018? You see the numbers and you decide. We'll see you in the next one. Alright, can you help me press the off button please? Thank you very much. I'd be so lost without you.